Alright, making this. This is a troubleshooting guide for 6.2, 6.5, 6.9, and 7.3 GM and Ford. More specifically, this video is directed uh, towards the DB2 standard dyne injection pump because that pump goes on both uh, makes of these engines. So I have made a troubleshooting guide and it basically split like this. When you see this at the top, it will be in black and this will be the symptoms. Next you will have your tips. First is your most likely cause. Second, which is in green, some blue, green, that's going to be okay. If it wasn't that, it's probably this. If it wasn't that, it's probably this one. If it wasn't this, it's probably this one. And so forth. All right, if you are cranking, and let's say it's a hard start, lots of cranking, and you are puffing white smoke, let's say it's a hard start, it does start up after lots of cranking, or it never does start up. And you have white smoke puffing out of the tailpipe until it finally does fire or you just give up. What this means is you actually have fuel in your cylinders and what's happening is your cylinder is not heating up enough and the com or the compression is not getting to the uh, right point to where it causes ignition or you have a timing issue. These are your tips. Again, just a quick tip is this little, little pew right there. Pew, pew, pew. So, number one is check a glow plug operation, and that's not jumping straight to the glow plugs, that is checking the actual controller. And for Ford, it looks like this right here. Now, I'm not getting into exactly what this does, I'll keep that separate, but basically this controls the circuit, and uh, this is the shunt resistor, but that's all I'm going to say. This is Ford's Chevrolet, looks different, it's just a little bit different design, and voila! And usually for Ford, this sits right behind the air intake. A little helpful tip there, so probably be a plastic box on top of it. Check this and make sure that it's at least coming on. And you can check that little light that's on your, your instrument cluster and make sure it's, it's at least coming on. If that's not coming on, well, you need to look a little bit closer at this. If your glow plug controller is checking out fine, uh, next thing you want to do is you want to check your uh, glow plugs. So you want to disconnect all the wires and ohm out each plug uh, with them still screwed in. Now you can take all eight of them out, assuming you have eight cylinders because this is over four different engines, two Ford and two GMC, and you can take them out, clean them up, clean the carbon off, and that'll help the indirect injection uh, process. But yeah, there's a bazillion videos on how to ohm out uh, your glow plugs on YouTube, but yeah and how to use a multimeter, so I'm sure you'll figure that out. This is just a sh uh, troubleshooting guide once again. All right, so let's say that you had all glow plugs that were in between. I forgot to mention that. They should be about between four to eight ohms. 5.5 is preferred. That is 0.5, has to be a point, remember that. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, number three, low engine compression. Uh, is incorrect injection pump timing fuel and quality so this is could just be another thing um, do you notice your engine not having much power this could be a low compression issue it could be the wrong injection pump uh, more than likely it's going to be fuel quality if you already checked all of this I wouldn't jump to conclusions just yet on that four is the crank speed is at least 100 rpms cold and if it's cold out of course it's going to take more battery juice to get it cranking and it's going to go wow 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 if it's really really cold out like zero degrees you it has to be the engine has to be able to turn quick enough to reach a fuel ignition speed and if you were if you were under this the 100 rpms a second when cranking there's a good chance this thing will never turn on especially if it's wore out it needs to actually be going faster because it can't she doesn't work quite like she used to Okay, we've got a hard start. In other words, cranking, 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 cranking forever, and then finally, engine comes on. Cold or hot. Notice this, cold or hot. Engine's warmed up and it's still a very, very hard crank. Cold, still a very, very hard crank. And you are lacking of smoke. Not enough fuel entering the cylinder is what's happening. Again, hard start, cold, or hot so engines warmed up and you're still having a hard time getting started 
again lack of smoke so you don't see any smoke coming out of the tailpipe at all just means there's not enough fuel entering the cylinder all right first tip on this is crank speed must be 180 to 200 rpms uh, hot and 100 minimum cold there we go with that minimum again if you're if you have a starter that's going weak um, it will not crank fast enough. You should hear nee, 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 not a round round round. You should really be checking your batteries and your uh, starter at this point because these are all things that do go bad again. My brother 73 actually had the same thing. Starter went out and uh, couldn't get it started. So we threw a new starter on it and uh, he says it's a brand new truck. All right, number two, check for the 12 volts at the fuel shutoff solenoid. Again, if you are having this issue, Check for the fuel shutoff at the solenoid. Next, check fuel supply. At the top of the housing where the fuel filter screws into, you'll have this little needle that uh, you can put a little gauge on there, but you should have four to eight PSI. And that is prior to the injection pump. This is the supply. Right there that's it right there and uh, notice it's at the highest point elevated in the whole system this is where you poke it to make sure you don't have aeration aka uh, air bubbles and stuff like that if you push this rather than hooking up a gauge if you don't have it while the uh, engine's running um, or if at least just crank it if you just crank the engine um, if it's not running um, you should have enough pressure built up in here that it will go like basically skied out fuel um, decent not a whole lot at uh, 48 psi oh, God. airlock number four let's see you just installed the pump or um, and even a fuel filter and uh, same thing you're having a lot of trouble um, air in these systems really really stink this is a little bit older older uh, tech and uh, it's not like the new stuff and you will have to crack um, uh, some lines loose and uh, just start at the top where I just showed you at and uh, start there and uh, if, if it helps you might have to move further on down the line at the each cylinder and crack the lines loose right there right there can you see where I'm pointing right there yeah on that thing right there never mind the bungee strap got some construction going on on me old pickup right now all right, so let's say that you did that and you're still having issues. What you could do is you can loosen all lines, all eight, assuming you have eight pistons, and crank for 30 seconds. And if you still have no fuel uh, coming out, uh, there's a really good chance the injection pump is bad. And that concludes this page on lack of smoke, not enough fuel. Next symptom is engine surges while running and uh, this is a fuel supply issue all about fuel diesels are all about fuel mainly until you get into the newer stuff and then it gets <laughs> way more harder again for the fuel supply issue surges while running check for air in the system hit the bleeder that i showed you on the top of that housing cap and uh, see if there's any air that's inside of it Let's say that you keep having air that's being drawn into the system at the top of the housing and uh, you haven't touched anything. This issue just kind of appeared out of, out of nowhere. Well, what you can do is you can find some areas in your line and it, starting at your pump, so you're or starting at your, your fuel tank, um, you'll have the, the vacuum or the suction and the mechanical um, mechanical guy that pumps that pumps it up it's a supply pump from four to eight psi it usually it mounts on the side of the engine for ford it is i don't know about chevrolet but it supplies it and then that's where the little four to eight psi comes in if you have aeration or bubbles coming up to the housing then what you could do is find those little rubber rubber um, hoses and you can slide them off and then what you'll do is you temporarily take a clear uh, clear hose and you will temporarily slide it on and you will observe the air bubbles coming through. If there are air bubbles going through the line, then that means your leak is farther closer towards the gas tank. And you will, this is a pain to do this, but it's, it's how you find leaks. Or the other thing you can do is just simply look around for wet areas on the line and you'll probably find it to where you don't have to mess with a see-through hose because diesel fuel stinks. 
I don't like diesel fuel. It's very, very nasty. Ruins clothes. All right, so let's say that there's no air in the system and you and uh, you're, you're having the surging while running. So it's most likely a sticking governor components that's on the actual inside of the injection pump itself. And what that means is, well, you just have to replace it and these things are not cheap. Usually cost about four to six hundred dollars. <clears throat> And the next thing that it could be is the cold advanced solenoid stuck on with constant power due to a bad cold start switch. The engine may surge. A little unlikely on this one, but there is actually a advanced uh, solenoid which increases the engine RPMs and it's cold um, and uh, be a good system to check right there. This right here is the solenoid that is the cold advanced. You'll notice that there's my throttle right there my cable and uh, when it is cold um, this arm will push out and my RPMs will go up somewhere around 900 RPMs and um, until it hits a certain threshold and then that guy will pull back like it is right now. Alright so starts then dies. This is normally a drain back issue. In fuel supply or low idle speed if started right away not a glow plug issue right because if it started it's definitely had nothing to do with the glow plugs you are dealing with fuel that is not maintaining um, steady pressure even at rest so let's say engine runs for one to two seconds then dies and you crank it and starts back up and uh, upon crank no problem uh, could be the idle speed remember that guy that I just showed you a moment ago that he is not doing his job it could be that uh, something's wrong there, but again, at cold, it's supposed to come up to 900 RPMs about, and then once it hits in a warm idle mode, it'll back off just a little bit, and it will go to uh, 750 to 800 RPMs in um, neutral or um, park. Whoa, engine starts for one to 10 seconds then dies. In other words, it just kind of depends. It's somewhere around in there. Then it's difficult to restart. It's most likely a drain back issue. Look for leaks. Look for external leaks. Uh, diesel fuel is very, very nasty again, and um, it should be obvious if you if it wasn't this one, um, look for leaks around. That's a pretty easy thing to do. The other thing, which is more unlikely, is the return to fuel tank is plugged or restricted. Um, need to check that out. Has to be able to go back to the tank. It has to. All right. Our symptom is the bluish white while running. So we are now running, and it's bluish white. White smoke with fuel smell is an incomplete burn. Will burn your eyes. Ooh. This one's a little bit trickier, guys. You got to go through all these steps because it could be many, many things. First thing to do is verify pump to engine timing, okay? Remember that this rotary pump is the heart and the timing of the whole engine. Unfortunately, I am not set up for that and you'll have to find another video on YouTube on the engine timing for the rotary pump. Remember that pump is the heart and soul of this engine. Without it, there is no timing. Number two. If you check that, make sure the fuel supply is clean, no bubbles. This one's actually more easier to do rather than that one. And make sure you're not running on old fuel or you went to a station and you maybe got some nasty old fuel. Um, I like Quick Trip, uh, at least in my part of the neck of the woods we have lots and lots of Quick Trips. I love Quick Trip. Um, you can also have gas in your diesel mix. Uh, what I do is kind of weird but I actually sniff the nozzle when I go and put fuel in at the gas stations because the guy dumping the fuel does make mistakes so that will also cause an incomplete burn so you should be asking yourself did you just recently put fuel in your truck so I'd be definitely smelling your tank because it won't smell right number three coolant or oil inside the combustion chamber you could have a blown head gasket you can have some other seal that went bad which is adding to it this is the same as combustion uh, gasoline combustion engines if you will but if it was um, coolant, the um, instead of it like more like burning your eyes, the exhaust uh, fumes, it would smell actually kind of sweet. 
so that would be an indication that coolant is also getting in there. The other thing you can do is check, um, uh, kind of check your, your uh, radiator, um, your, re your reservoir, and see what color, see if there's any oil sediments floating. Don't mistake in the sediments for uh, rust in your system because it's easily to do that. It should be like really gooey if it is. Um, uh, if, if, if you do have a blown head gasket, you definitely have of one. Uh, number four, low engine compression will cause um, white smoke. Not that white smoke. For example, if you have rings that are going bad, um, like the engine smoke will kind of look a little whitish, but blue, bluish white. And uh, yeah, and oil will be blowing past the rings, and it's a sad engine. A leaking or stuck nozzle usually has a knock, so what you could do is you can loosen the fuel line to see if the sound changes. What I'm trying to say is, um, so kind of like how combustible cars are, you can go to each cylinder and you can open up the line. Uh, you can crack it where I showed you earlier in the video, where I went right there, right there, remember that? And, uh, and you do that on each cylinder, and if it... Uh, goes away then it's on that cylinder and you should be checking out to see if uh, it's a fuel injector or other issues related to that cylinder. It means you isolated the problem. And a little bit more uncommon is a worn injection pump will cause um, this at all times. In other words it's running and it'll always look bluish white. So, Alright so engine running and we have black smoke this is a rich condition and um, or that the air is constrict but yes it's a rich which means we have more fuel to the air molecules so um, could have something to do with the pump such as altering it like I did and alright so number one check the air filter if you have a clogged air filter it will obviously um, you, you'll use more fuel and uh, it'll burn black number two pump to the engine timing over advanced timing will cause this. Number three, if boosted, check boost PSI between 8 to 12 PSI. Check for restrictions, leaks in the pipes. Go over all your plumbing for the boost station. Four, worn injectors. Check out your injectors. Number five, a worn injection pump, components advancing, incorrect calibration. Um, I have my own videos on how to adjust it and I actually turned my pump up and I love it um, and this will cause more black smoke but it's only when I smash it at low RPMs. Engines 6.2 and 6.5 with the EGR will um, this will definitely be a symptom and loss of power and again this is Chevrolet's yeah 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 check this out do not confuse this make sure you go through all these steps a lot of stuff going on here all right if you have a little bit of air in your fuel supply this will cause some black smoke without surging 7.3s only is usually the only engine you'll see this on so make sure there's no air in your system if you went through all this other stuff and it wasn't that because basically what's happening is it's causing a lot of I don't want to call it cavitation in the on the actual uh, injection pump itself, but it's definitely not being steady, so it will cause the system to run sporadic, which will poof out black smoke. All right, so we're running, and it feels like it's missing or it's running rough. If problem is traced to a specific cylinder, then you need to look at that cylinder. If it cannot be isolated, it's either going to be the injection pump or it's going to be a balancing issue such as the dampener or the flywheel but usually flywheels don't necessarily you usually don't have problems with them um, only if it's a clutch yeah you should probably look at it um, but definitely check out the dampener and see what's going on there number one is to isolate the problem this is just kind of like another good tip is isolate the problem don't be chasing squirrels underneath the hood number two again flywheel dampener i just said that number three Check idle speed. Um, if your air conditioner is loaded or the vehicle is like in gear or drive or anything like that, um, it'll almost feel like a surge. Remember, there's a lot of rotating mass with uh, these engines. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of American steel. And uh, yeah, so if it's idling low, it's, it's these things naturally put off a lot of vibration. 
So just make sure your air conditioner is not loaded, the vehicle's not in gear, if it's in park, um, and you're having some weird symptoms like this, just go back to number one and isolate the problem. Number four, no other issue found, most likely the injection pump. Um, if you truly do have missing going on everywhere, uh, again, crack the lines, um, and you have your four to eight PSI supply, uh, no question about it, no error, yeah. Um, and your, your injection pump, IP, stands for injection pump, uh, its peak is 6,700 PSI to each cylinder. That's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of pressure. So be careful when you're cracking these. Uh, wear safety glasses and a full body condom suit. Keep out all the wet juices. Diesel fuel is nasty. Low power. Low power for your truck. All right, check your throttle linkage. And just make sure, because if you got like a lot of miles on her or anything like that, even cracks or anything that randomly broke, um, just a good thing to check to make sure everything looks right. Check the pump to engine timing. Number three, if turbo, check for black smoke. It's another, another um, hint. Number four, check fuel supply on housing. Back to checking the fuel pressure. Make sure there's no air in the bubbles for loss of power. It's, again, it's all fuel. Diesel's all based around fuel. Number five, check test injectors. So you want to make sure that they're working. Uh, la, 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 la. Because if you do not have your thousands of thousands of PSI per each cylinder, the, the opening per each injector is going to be very weak and it will cause a loss of power, especially if you're under a load. Um, and if your spray pattern's off, it's clogged or anything like that, that will also be another loss of power. Uh, number six, injection pump return fuel exceeds 460 cc's at idle, and that is the return for the fuel going back to the fuel tank exceeds this. Um, the injection pump is bad. Number seven, 6.2 and 6.5, the EGR system, black smoke, and low, um, this will call us uh, low power. Here we are, dies while driving. Fuel supply issue. We can see that fuel is critical for diesel engines. All right, change your effing fuel filter. Fuel filter, fuel filter, fuel filter, fuel filter, fuel filter. Um, I actually made a mistake on mine, and part of my journey learning is some jack wagon, huh, wasn't me, but someone put another fuel filter upstream from my fuel filter that screws in the housing. Well, I didn't really look at it that closely, and my the one that was upstream doesn't belong there. It only belongs there on gasoline setups, and it was the wrong fuel filter, and it was choking it out through time. Number two, check the suction side of line for... I just stopped writing. You want to check the suction side to make sure there's, there's, um, uh, there's no indication of fuel leaks, anything like that. Make sure, because lines do break, rubber lines do break down, steel does rust, etc. And the other cheap thing that you can do is you can change the fuel supply pump. There's a little diaphragm in that little guy, and it's like old school pumps that mount on the side of your engine block. Uh, GM and Ford, they basically use the same design. There's a little arm in there that goes off of the lobe, and uh, it just pumps it up, and that diaphragm is what gives you the 4 to 8 PSI. And over just many, many miles and years, it just kind of cracks and goes bad. Uh, so this can also be an issue uh, with that flap in there, just something happened to it. And I think it's like 20, 30 bucks or something to get one of these uh, brand new at the store. So it's a pretty affordable, you can do it yourself. It's two bolts, um, two hoses, pretty easy. Hopefully this video helped you out. And it is for, again, engines 6.2, 6.5, GM, Chevrolet, whatever, and Ford 6.9 and 7.3. They're and it might be for engines 5.7 diesel, but I don't know much about that one. That one's for GM. I don't think that's a very popular engine. I think it was a throwaway. Anyways, this is for the O, or excuse me, DB2 Standine Injection Pump Troubleshooting Guide. Troubleshooting Guide to help you figure out what in the world's going on and uh, seeing if it's the injection pump. They are, again, very expensive, four to $600 on a good day. Um, and that's with your core, so. Um, usually those things are pretty tough and they don't, you know, it takes a lot to, to kill them. But they do go bad. Do go bad. But hopefully this helped you. If it did, like and subscribe. And by liking and subscribing, you support independent channels like myself and encourage the free knowledge web. If you don't, I'll just lay it all in the videos. Have a nice day.